I'm glad to have you back. With most organizations already dealing with a slowdown, if not a complete shutdown due to the adverse effect of COVID-19 pandemic. Well, branding, marketing and all of that during this period, we need a lot of creativity and tact to ensure that the message of the brand is effectively communicated. As the economic recession sets in, this is probably the most testing time for the branding and marketing businesses to connect with their audience, keep their businesses going, build a connection with new customers and maintain pre-existing ones uh, will now be more difficult than it has been in the recent past. Now, as the reality of post-COVID-19 becomes a new normal, certain uh, services that require face-to-face -face interaction at some point will probably require a lot of changes in their method of operations. That's part of the upheaval uh, defining this uh, most difficult year. Brands are continuing to transform in real time and lay foundations for future growth. Joining me live in the studio to prefer solutions or to actually analyze and break all of this down for understanding uh, to a variety of ways brand and marketing business can respond to the current COVID-19 pandemic he is the CEO of USP Brands Management and author of the seven dimensions of branding, Mr. Muiwa Kayodi. I must thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much and for having me. Great to have you on the show. Thank you for, I really appreciate this. Uh, first, I was thinking branding in, in, in itself, it's quite wide, it's quite big. Uh, I'm looking at branding in an emerging economy like Nigeria. Can you take us through what it looks like? Yeah, I'm happy you said branding is quite broad <laughs> and um, it's quite big. Uh, because um, for the first few years while we were trying to preach the benefits of holistic branding in this country, one of the challenges we had was a certain misconception of branding as some kind of cosmetic exercise. You just take something, you paint it and package it, make it look attractive, and that is branding. And that created a lot of problems for people because the content is even more important than the appearance, the outward packaging. So yes, branding has to do with the essence of your value creation. The most important thing about branding is the creation of value. If you are not creating value, you don't have a brand. And that is the starting point of whatever successful branding you want to do. So I think it's important that we get that very, very clear so that people don't think that branding is just what you do to make something look attractive. That is important, yes, but that thing you're trying to make attractive is where the actual branding lies. So yes, um, once we have that understanding, then we begin to look at what um, role or, or the impact of branding in, 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 in an emerging market like Nigeria. About 13 years ago, we started a program called Brand to Wealth, and the whole purpose of that is to, ex to espouse our vision of creating or helping entrepreneurs create proudly and authentic and original Nigerian and African brands. Because when we look at it, and we've done studies over the years, one of the biggest reasons why we have so much poverty across Africa is because we Africans are not building globally competitive brands. Brands create wealth. And that is why we say brand to wealth. When you grow your brand, you are creating wealth. You know, so we need to do a lot of this across Africa. And especially in Nigeria, where we have the largest market on the continent, we need to begin to build our own brands. The more we rely on foreign brands, the more we are promoting poverty yeah. amongst our own people. You know, so for an imagine economy like ours, we need to we need to we need to understand the role the role that brands have to play. And what that means is that we need to build brands that empower our people, that enrich our people and that create wealth and employment for our people. And the only way to do that is to go that whole hug and, and go through that process. It's painstaking. It takes time. Great brands don't happen overnight. Yeah, true. And what we find in our economy, for the most part, is that 
a lot of our investors and financial institutions are too much interested in that quick return. Brands are not built that way. You need to give it time, you need to nurture it, you need to, it's like a cocoa tree that will not start yielding fruit uh, until it's at least five years old. And in those five years, you need to do a lot of things, apply crop protection, pesticides, apply the rules. If you don't apply the rules, in those five years, you are not even, begin to, you are not even going to be able to reap the, the benefits. That is the way brands are built. But when you begin to reap the benefits, mm. it, it's, it's everlasting. And that is why we have brands today that are over 100 years old. And they are still getting They're bigger. Still getting they are still getting bigger. stronger. Yeah, uh -huh. I, I noticed that when you mention some names, you can't just wish it away. But, but I, I'm looking at Nigeria in particular. Uh, many, I don't want to use that word Nigerian factor, but many always say in this part of the world, the challenges are enormous. If it's not funding, it's infrastructure, it's uh, being more creative and, and thinking through what you want to present out for your clients. How well would you say play as it is industry? How well are they taking advantage of all of this and really pushing out the right, right, the right brands uh, there for Nigerians to see? Yes, yeah, it's true that the challenges are many. And we can't talk more than enough about these challenges. But where there are challenges, there are also opportunities. And that is what brands... Um, have done. One of the things about creating a successful brand is when you feel a need, when you meet a need, when you meet people at their point of need, it still ties, in, it still ties into creating value. And where there are needs, we have approximately 200 million people with needs. And where there are needs, there are opportunities for brands. There are business opportunities, and we've seen a, a, a number of companies tapping into those opportunities and creating success stories in the process. Um, I'm sorry, I may not be able to give actual examples of these specific brands, but if, for instance, we have low purchasing power, and you have a particular product, and you find out that this particular product a lot of people cannot afford it, and you want to make it more affordable to the people. So what you, what you do is you take the value in that product and you translate it into a particular format that makes it more affordable, that you reach more people. Sometimes that is done by creating a sub-brand or by some kind of what we call brand extension. You know, you say, okay, fine, I have X premium water. But I find out that I'm selling 2 million bottles in a year. I want to sell more than that. And then I create X premium water, maybe a smaller size or in sachet or whatever it is. And then I'm able to reach more people with the same product offering, but put in a format or in a packaging that it makes it more affordable and it expands my market. Yeah. You know, so in times like this, where people's purchasing power is dropping, brands now have that challenge to ensure that their market is not shrinking because when your market is shrinking, you are in trouble. You know? So how do you now ensure that without losing the essence of your brand, because sometimes there's a temptation, okay, let's water it down a little bit. Let us cut corners. Let us reduce the quality. You don't do it. Once you begin to do that, yes. you kill your brand. You know? So it's easier said than done. It's challenging. But those brands that are able to meet those challenges, they are the ones that always succeed. And they keep reinventing themselves and redefining themselves. And they remain relevant for the long haul in the minds and lives of consumers. Which is key. But in, in all of this, this is COVID-19 has come, almost like a second wave. We've seen budgets drop, adverse budgets drop. We, we are also players in that industry. We live on advertising bills, and we expect all of this to come in. Now, what effect would you say this has had generally on all of the sectors, branding in a COVID-19 era? Well, I think it has um, led to a reduction in how much we pay for some of these services. But during the pandemic, to start with, this is something that nobody expected. Yes. So 
Nobody was prepared for Sweet. it. It caught us all by surprise. And in the process, we noticed that some brands were able to respond very quickly. What that means is that you suddenly find all your consumers sitting at home for months. Ordinarily, you will say, this is the best time for me to be on TV advertising my brand. This is the best time for me to be on social media advertising my product because people are just sitting at home. Even while they are working from home, they spend more time watching TV, they spend more time on their smartphones and tablets and all of that. And some brands were able to take advantage of that. Secondly, it is also a time to respond. You see, because there is a common humanity in us that this called to question. And it was a time to respond and to show the world that you care. And we saw a lot of brands doing that because when people have needs and you meet them at that point, they don't forget you. Brands are like humans. And when we grow brands, we grow brands the same way you nurture children, you know. So brands are like humans. They have a soul. They have an identity. They have a name. They have a relationship with their consumers. And during this period, we also were on the lookout. OK, fine. This thing has happened suddenly. We didn't expect it. How do you respond? How do you show your consumers that, yes, even at this point in time where things are so topsy-turvy, we are there for you. We are not just there when you have a lot of money to spend. We are also there when you are in that particular kind of situation where you are not able to spend as much as you would normally spend, when you are not even able to leave your home and go about your normal businesses. So we saw a lot of companies come out, take part in support government programs to provide succor and some comfort. We also were able to develop and implement some of such programs for some of our clients because it is easy as an entrepreneur to sit back and be thinking of how much you're going to lose. Mm. Oh, this thing has happened. We are not making sales. But what times like this require is for you as a brand to step up and make yourself more relevant mm. in the lives of consumers. Yes, some brands were able to do that. And long after the pandemic, the impacts that those brands were able to make will remain stamped in the minds and souls of their consumers for a long, long time. for a long time to come. Let's round up on, on this note. As we move on, uh, let's let's agree that um, it gets better. The figures are dropping. COVID nineteen in, in Nigeria. Uh, what are the prospects and projections? What do you think would be happening in the sector uh, as we move on? Ah uh, well. COVID-19 has changed everything forever. Um, business will never return to pre-COVID-19 levels, format, templates, and all. The way we do business has changed. COVID-19 has been kind of a disruptor. It, 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 it has kind of changed the landscape in so many ways. It has created new business opportunities. It has created new opportunities for, for people to build new brands. And some companies have actually taken advantage of those opportunities. And we are seeing what they are doing uh, as, uh, by virtue of what challenges came with COVID-19. Uh, COVID so going ahead, companies now have to reposition and remain uh, competitive. How does COVID-19 and its implications and its fallout, how does it affect our competitiveness in the market? That is the question that each brand owner now has to, you know, has to ask himself. How does it affect our competitiveness? And what do we need to do to maintain and even increase our competitive advantage in the market? Is it in terms of how we apply technology? Is it in terms of our staff welfare? Is it in terms of how we relate with our customers? Is it in terms of how we reassign our marketing and advertising spend into 
the new, more effective media? These are the questions that, and there is no one straight answer to all because every brand has its own unique story. And you are going to have to, um, uh, uh, um, you are going to have to respond to this situation and stay ahead of the curve based on your brand story, your brand vision, and what your immediate and medium to long-term goals are. Very interestingly said. Thank you very much for your time. Chief Executive Officer of USP Brand Management and author of The Seven Dimensions of Branding, Mr. Muyuwa Coyote. Thank you very much for your time on the show. I really always, appreciate it. Always my pleasure. Thank you. All right, let's take a break. Uh, when we return, we'll look at the figures on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Don't go away. It's your business, Nigeria. Words, facts, opinion. Is the orchestra of these men who do not sway to the synthetic rhythm of opinion. The debater screams words trapped in temples that run too fast to play back just as the instruments fall in and out of tune. Climbing a crescendo, men take a stand, testing and pulling, slamming the fact of each other in and out. After the crescendo comes the climax, all notes quietly resting as the debates reach inference. Join me, Mark Otamo, as I conduct the symphony of debates on The Big Issue. Glad to have you back. It's that time where we look at highlights on the trading of the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Figures in shows that the market is starting the week on the negative side. We have 0.19% down. My colleague Efion Gekop is here. Take us through these figures. And I think we'll take a look at the commodities market too to see what's playing out there this uh, Monday. Efion, exactly. uh, take let, it let away. Let's start with the Nigerian markets. Okay. You know, last week we had a negative trade for three days. And on Friday, the market uh, was able to breathe in green. Today, we see that from mid-trade, the market was down and it's closing in the negative uh, territory. We understand, naturally, this is the time that investors always want to, you know, sell, sell off securities cash. to take and then prepare for Christmas. But because of the novelty nature of the market that we've seen since the first half of uh, this year, we saw many people trooping to, you know, be buying you know, in different uh, subsectors. So let's think that the traditional Christmas sales, you know, will push investors to stay, you know, in, in the sales uh, window for maybe one or two weeks. But I still have uh, a strong feeling that uh, the market is going to end in the positive uh, territory at the end of uh, this month because of the quantum of money that people are taking, you know, to... You see the traffic from domestic investors, very huge and very, very strong. So even though the market ends in the negative territory, if you look at some sectors, a huge level of uh, you know, profit uh, taking. So that's, uh, that's somehow a good one. Exactly. Now, if we look at the commodities market, commodities market still stay you know, in the mixed uh, territories. But you see that uh, the price of uh, mess has a... Uh, Gone up again. Wow. MES is selling over 200,000 naira per ton. And uh, you know that it's been talk of the town for you know, those engaging in uh, feed milling and then poultry farmers. They need a lot of yeah, grains beans. to be able to stay yeah. in business. Some of them were even urging the government to you know, reopen the borders so that they get these things from across uh, the borders. And if that happens, we don't know what happens to the gains that uh, we thought we've gotten from the closure of the thing. The, the, the impact of uh, flood and then the insecurities that are scared uh, farmers you know, from doing yeah. work in their farms, certainly they have great impact on the economy. And uh, many workers 
those of them involved in the running of poultry farms are being asked to stay at home. That's, that's a great loss. And you know, this is a festive season that we are going in now. Yeah. So you have to bother about how much you would pay for, you know, one chicken that you need to kill. <laughs> that's <a story. laughs> so that, that's it's a it. serious business is, because food is. security is here threatened. Yeah. Grains, very, very important. Apart from poultry farmers, feed millers, they need. Yeah. Then those doing fish think, farming, yeah, fish they farming. need a lot. You understand. Yeah. And you also reserve some for replanting in the next season. So we've got to take uh, that uh, serious. Beer, yes, exactly. <laughs> ah, you get it. Beer makers, they use a lot yeah, of uh, grains. Yeah. But I think some of them have done some kind of uh, backward integration by, you know, planting uh, maize on their own sorghum, cereal. But how far they can go, we need Absolutely. local farmers you know, to be sustained uh, in business. So commodities market, we look up, is still mixed. I think my colleague, thank you very much for your time. It's always great having you in the studio. Thank you. Asian shares retreated from a record peak today after a report the United States was preparing to impose sanctions on some Chinese officials heightened uh, political tension, geopolitical tensions, while oil price fell on surging virus cases. In a signal market, uh, everywhere uh, elsewhere would start weaker. Euro stock 50 futures were 0.4% down. Futures for German DAX E 0.3%. While those of London FTSE were flat. E money futures for SP 500 slipped 0.2%. MSCI's broadest index of Asian Pacific shares outside of Japan fell 0.1% following four straight sessions of gain. The index hit a record high of 644.3 points earlier today. It's up about 16% so far this year. The best things. A 33% jump in 2017. China's blue chip index dropped 0.8%, largely ignoring strong export data while Hong Kong Hang Seng was down 1.7%. Japan's Nikkei declined 0.46%, while Australian shares were up 0.6%. Brexit trade talks are hung on the balance today as Britain and the European Union made a last ditch attempt to bridge significant differences and strike a deal that would avoid a disorderly exit in jo just 24 uh, days' time. As fears rose of no deal chaos in uh, December 31st, when the United Kingdom finally leaves the EU orbit, talks will resume in Brussels uh, before British Prime Minister Boris Johnson and European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen uh, reveals the situation in the evening. Irish Prime Minister Michael Martin said on Sunday the chances of a deal were just a 50-50, while investment bank JP Morgan said odds of a no-trade deal exit had risen to one-third from 20%. That's our show today. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow, same time. Enjoy the rest of your day.